Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm delivering another Tomura Shigaraki fanfiction. It has been a while since we had a Tomura Shigaraki fanfiction, so here we go. I really enjoyed writing this one and I wrote this one in two hours. Nice. Um, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed just as much as I enjoyed writing it. Please remember to like, watch the video until the end. You can even dislike if you want and comment something down below. This enhances my standing in YouTube algorithm. So please do that. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. The League recently abandoned their previous hideout. A two-story log cabin in the woods. For an old hotel that had to be left to rot as mold was discovered in the basement and the only reason it wasn't demolished yet was a nearby swamp area with an endangered squirrel species living in it. And blowing up the hotel would cause damage to it and probably the squirrels. So the League simply made a rule to never go down into the basement and only stay in areas Kurugiri had thoroughly cleaned and bleached. Sure, this was still dangerous. But it beat being homeless. But unlike the lock cabin, the hotel still had internet access. Sure, it was very slow. Most likely a leftover router that no one bothered taking down. But internet was internet. The problem with this new base of operation had been... You. A homeless woman living on the rooftop of the building. The hotel's roof was flat with a layer of gravel on top, so you had set up a tent there. You had even used spare wooden beams and some loose earth in an attempt to build a little farm. And while all attempts at trying to grow something have failed, so far, it was nice waking up and watering your soil. It gave you a routine. Initially you had hid from them, despite not knowing who they were, the rough look they had certainly was intimidating. Now your big setup was a bust, however, as it had made them highly aware of any person running about. So you yourself weren't hidden for long. You had been found by a lanky white-haired guy with horribly dry skin. Hell. You lived on the windy rooftop of an abandoned hotel, and somehow even you had managed to have less calloused skin than him. After the initial shock of your discovery, his hands wrapped around your throat. Yet, he didn't choke you. He just awkwardly held onto you for a few seconds, before giving you a confused look. You blinked. Are you going to kill me, or what now? The question sounded as awkward as the situation was. I... This never happened before. You snorted. What? He barked. You sound like my ex. As a reply, he snorted too, and his lips moved further up, turning his creepy grin into a smile. Gotta admit, that was a good one. He let go of your throat. Who are you? And how can you survive my quirk? He asked in an accusatory manner. You scratched the back of your head. Uh, I'm homeless. That's really all about who I am. As for your quirk, I don't know. You were very confused. Homeless, he repeated with a melancholy tone. So, really now, are you going to kill me or not? Because this is very awkward. He shrugged and you deadpanned. Wow, that's a good answer. Sarcasm isn't going to help you here. In reply, you simply shrugged in response. The man grunted. Uh, stay here. I need to talk with the others. And then he stepped away. Whatever insane thought pattern in your brain made you decide to actually wait for him to come back, just to see what would happen instead of running away, 
Well, somehow this managed to be a good idea. As the guy returned with a blonde giggling girl and an edgy emo looking guy who just looked at you with disinterest. Immediately upon crossing the girl's gaze, however, she jumped on top of you and pressed a knife to your throat. Just say the word, Tomura! Followed by her laughing maniacally. The white-haired guy with the bad skin condition, however, smiled. Look into her eyes, Toga! He hissed. Don't waste your breath on her. The girl, Toga, grabbed you by the chin, forcing you to look her into her amber-colored eyes. Oh my! She giggled. You're right! She died long ago! Then the girl jumped up and clutched Homer's jacket. Can we keep her? Please! Please, I'm begging you! The man scoffed. I guess that's up to her then. And this is how you became the newest member of the League of Villains. They certainly were an entertaining bunch. And unlike most people in the outside world, these people were quite honest. You had your fair share of bad experiences with other people, so it was nice and fresh hearing someone say, yo, I'm going to stomp you in your head if you keep doing that, instead of a backhanded compliment followed by them stealing your hard work. It had been a few weeks now. Since you were not on the radar of the media, you could actually move about in the city without much hassle. Plus, there is a reason homeless are called the invisible people. As Tom Wright put it, you had become a valuable food dispenser. Coming from a guy as cartoonishly evil as him, this was actually quite the compliment. And over the next few weeks, you integrated yourself into their fold. Luckily, today had been a lazy day. It was a very hot summer day. And while two members of the League, named Twice and Spinner, were desperately trying to repair and power the air conditioner unit of the hotel, you were lazing about in the abandoned lobby. The group had done quite a nice job cleaning the gross floors, and even threw out smashed furniture. The lobby itself was quite cool with a little bit of moist carpet smell. It definitely beat being on It definitely beat being cooked alive on the roof, however. You were alone, save for Tomura, who was trying to salvage leftover sweets from a vending machine. After a while, he approached you and sat down next to you holding an open bag of stale potato chips your way. Want some? he asked. You blinked. It was always weird whenever this guy was at least somewhat nice to anyone, really. Especially you. Quickly like a snake, you reached into the bag and took out two big ones. While happily chewing on the barely edible treat, Tomura spoke up. It's been a few days now. He said with a curious undertone. And, uh... Your attention shifted from the potato chips to him. I just... The curiosity's killing me. You knew he was beating around the bush like that just to make you just as curious as him. Go ahead, you said. When I choked you that evening, why didn't you die? By now you had learned about the destructive nature of his quirk. Uh... You needed to think. You actually didn't know. What's your quirk? He asked. You closed your eyes for a moment. You had forgotten. Noticing your furrowed brows as you were desperately trying to remember, he retorted. You're the first person I meet who is older than five who doesn't know their own quirk. You gave him a hard look, and he blinked. Tomura was surprised himself. He actually didn't want to insult you, and he didn't know why. He sighed. I don't remember. I really don't. It was years ago the last time I thought about it. 
he scoffed. So it's a useless one you never used, huh? I... I don't know, you said quietly. He grinned diabolically before stating, I have a feeling. He got up and walked in front of you once again. But instead of choking you, he took both of your hands in his, and you blushed. See? Still nothing. By now you knew his quirk all too well. Once even disintegrated the doorknob of a bathroom spinner had been occupying by accident, trapping the lizard man for two hours until the emo guy Darby noticed he was trapped and burnt down the door. I think this is the result of your quirk. You blinked and looked up at him. And now it was his turn to blush. Uh, don't look at me like that! He scoffed before turning around and crossing his arms. You apologized and he replied, y You made it weird for me. Weird for him? The past weeks had been the most surreal thing to ever happen to you. Now that you think about it, it really was. How did your life turn out like this? I'm still not over it. He said after a moment of silence. He suppressed a chuckle. He definitely was trying something. Just, what was it though? Wait. Tomara? You asked carefully. He grunted an acknowledgement. Are you upset you can't kill me with your quirk? No. His answer came a little too fast. Tomara, why did you let me join? He didn't reply. After another moment of silence, an almost desperate thought came to you. The man was quite childish. Prone to bouts of anger. Mostly towards Darby, twice, and anything related to heroes. It was a simple hunch. And if it turned out to be wrong, sure, there would be a few awkward days, but you could deal with that. You grinned and quietly stood up, taking a step closer to him, before wrapping your arms around his chest. He groaned his muscles tensing under you. Uh, what are you doing? He moaned. Yet, he did not attempt to push you away. You are glad he couldn't see your face, though. For you were grinning. I like you too, Tomara. For a moment, he seized all movement. Come on, intuition. You thought. Come on. He softly rubbed over your hands. This changes nothing. He scoffed. Come on. Say it. You seductively whispered into his ear. Oh, fine. Yes, I like you. You gently pushed your head onto the back of his neck. Grin as wide as it could be. You had just secured a permanent position within the league. You knew that all you needed. You knew that all he needed was the single touch of a woman. Good boy. Came your hushed mumble. As your lips gently pressed onto the soft skin of his neck. 